Welcome, welcome. I just wanted to chat about the mind-body connection during birth and throughout our labors when we are having a baby. So first I am going to grab an oil and kind of set the intention because that is super important to do when we are in that place and stage of labor. It's definitely something you can do beforehand is setting up who you're going to have at your birth, um, what are some important things that you want it to feel like, um, so maybe some soft music, soft lighting, different things to kind of set the tone for, for how you want your birth to go. And this is obviously something you can do at a home birth, in a hospital, in a birthing center. Remember that you are capable of creating that space and the people who are there, uh, making sure you feel comfortable and confident with everyone who is going to be present with your birth. Sometimes in a hospital setting, that's a little bit more tricky and challenging, but do your best and do what you can. Uh, make sure to speak up. If you have too many people in the room or too many people observing your birth, um, then have your partner, your husband, whoever is there with you to just kind of ask some people for some space. Having a doula present at your birth is, is a super, super important uh, thing that you can have as well. But I wanted to just chat about the mind-body connection because most of us are taught that the mind and the body are two completely separate things, when in actual reality, they are all one. So our mind is many, many parts and pieces, um, but we're going to specifically talk about two pieces. Um, I'm going to just mainly focus on the subconscious mind, but just think of your mind being broken up into two pieces. So you've got the conscious mind and then the subconscious mind. So with your subconscious mind, that's where it's sending all the messages to our body. So that's where our feeling and our actions and our doing things come from. So if we have kind of a belief system set up in our subconscious mind, so for example, we'll keep it on on the theme of birth for any of any of you who are watching this and are uh, in this stage or you're currently pregnant or you want to be pregnant, um, then this is definitely something you want to keep in mind as you as you go through your your fertility or pregnancy journey because you know you're going to get to the point of now it's time my baby has grown, now it's time to birth my baby. Um, so fear, so if we're holding on to any kind of fear, that is going to get held in that lower part of our mind, in the subconscious mind. So a really, really awesome example. So I'm pulling quite a bit of information out of Ina Mae Gaskin's Guide to Childbirth book. I absolutely love this book because she brings it back to the mind and the body and allowing women to birth the way that we're meant to birth and setting up kind of like I said in the beginning was creating that environment creating that comfort place where you're going to feel comfortable and confident to to birth your baby so an example where we could sometimes be holding fear in the mind is there's an example right in this book about how um, a woman in labor, everything goes completely fine. She is progressing, the cervix is dilating, everything is happening the way it should. And then around seven centimeters, she starts to kind of stall out. So with that, the midwife really started to kind of look and kind of see how she was doing, ask some questions. And what it came down to was that um, the woman who was laboring was adopted 
And her mother, her biological mother, she had found out, had actually passed away during childbirth. So her mind was instilling this fear that if she progresses to 10 centimeters and now it's time to start pushing my baby out, she had this fear that that same thing was going to happen to her. So it's insane how we can take the power of our mind and how much control it has over our body when it is something like that, a story, an experience that you have brought emotion to, and now that is sitting in your subconscious mind and it's controlling your entire body. And so by allowing this fear to be talked about and it be brought up because the laboring mother didn't necessarily bring it up. It was a friend that attended and came to the birth that had let the midwife know that this was going on or that this might have been something that was coming up for her. And as soon as that fear was brought up and brought to the attention and everything, it was it ended up being not a big deal. And within two hours, her baby was born. So it's just understanding what's coming up for you, either what you're worried about, what you're fearful of. Um, a lot of women are fearful of pain. And again, there's lots of trauma that happens during birth. So we, we think of someone else's birth story and it's going to automatically happen to us. But the as we know, the power of the mind and how much control it has over the body, we know that those fears are not actually true. But we tell ourselves that they are, even though there is nothing actually there present proving that those fears are true. But we can bring light to them, bring awareness to them, and then that way we can move through them. So it's understanding that the mind and the body are all one <laughs> and our mind is actually in every cell of our body. So it's it's different than thinking about just the brain. The brain is an organ. The mind is in every cell of our body. So it affects. It can affect our uterus and our cervix during birth and labor. It can affect our breast milk production, once baby is born, if we have a fear of whatever it might be, then that can portray through every area of our body, our baby will feel that and our milk will stop producing or it will slow down. So it's just understanding and being aware that, okay, this is what's coming up for me. And then now, what can I do with these tools? in order to subside that fear and kind of like get past it or get over that that wall of fear. So I just want to chat about um, a placebo effect because this has kind of is very much connected to this idea. So a placebo effect is when somebody is given basically a sugar pill and to treat something in the body. Um, and basically you use your mind to then think because you've you've taken something that you don't know if it's like a medication that's going to help with whatever you're feeling or if it's the sugar pill. But the power of the mind actually has the ability in most cases to believe that that issue or feeling in the body starts to subside even though you didn't actually take anything to help with that feeling but it's been completely your mind that has now told your body that it's okay you're releasing that fear you're allowing the process to work so i just love to bring this back to birth because when we are given the proper tools and your environment 
is key for this, whether it's throughout your entire labor, it's throughout your pregnancy, is being around a really awesome environment, awesome people, um, and encouraging people. So if you're around a lot of people that think you're crazy if you want a home birth, or that are suggesting you get all the things, all the tests done, and it just doesn't align with you, then that's going to set a lot of fear into your mind and your body. And your growing baby is then in turn going to feel all of that. So it's understanding that this placebo effect, if you're given the right tools, you could have exactly the birth that you want. And another story that um, is talked about in this book is how we can demand our subconscious mind to allow things in the body to happen. So another example is that a woman had previously had a home birth, so she had experienced it before, um, but this for her second baby, um, the baby was kind of showing signs of preterm labor. So labor was beginning too soon. So she was able to work with a nurse midwife and a doctor within a hospital to kind of have um, a bit of a trial to figure out what was happening with her body. And so during her, her birth, she really wanted a home birth. But because of the circumstances, she ended up being in a hospital. And with that, she had her midwife, the nurse midwife, present in the hospital, and she was able to create that environment of the home birth, so where she felt super safe, she knew who was going to be present at her birth, and they were very trusted, comforting people that she knew were going to make her feel safe in, in this space, even though it wasn't her home. And with that, the next thought that came, again, everything was progressing just as normal. She kind of stalled out at six to seven centimeters, um, same as this previous story. But the difference was that she had different thoughts and there was different things coming in. And so anyways, the midwife was able to check her. And as she was saying, I just want my body to be open and I can deliver this baby. She was sending a message from her subconscious mind because she felt it so deeply in her mind. So she brought emotion and feeling to it that she just wanted this baby to be born. And as the midwife could feel the cervix, and as she said those words, the cervix opened. And I know this sounds crazy, but again, it goes back to the power we have with our mind in that body connection. So there are many, many examples of this, but in birth specifically, it's, it's very interesting to see how connected your body and your mind are, but we don't believe they're connected, but it's understanding that they are. And now how can you work with this? So again, when you are put in the right environment, when you are given the right tools, when you are given that kind of trusted, safe place and people, you literally can have anything that you want. And many, many times we are told that it's our body can't birth this baby or so these fears kind of get put in our mind through somebody else or through an outside circumstance. But it's understanding and believing that that's not true because there's no actual proof or evidence that your pelvis is too small to birth your baby. Lots of doctors will say that, but it's not actually true. So it's understanding that if this is the path that you want, so basically, your goal of having either a natural birth, a hospital birth, whatever kind of birth plan or um, whatever you visualize when you're like, this is how my baby is going to arrive. Understand that that could happen. 
it all just stems back to your belief system. So if your belief system is not in alignment with what is set up in that subconscious mind, then that is when kind of these side paths end up happening during our labor. And then this kind of results in why there is so much trauma and work that needs to be done after a baby is born because there was some outside circumstances and lots of other things leading us to believe that our body was not capable. So <laughs> I find this information fascinating because I can take what I've learned and what I study every single day and apply it to birth and pregnancy and labor and postpartum and raising children and motherhood. And I just think it's incredible the power that we have within us and we don't tap into it and we ignore it. We ignore the signs and everything else, but it's just understanding that you are capable of having the exact birth and labor that you want. And if you're not sure how to get there or how to start, you're in the right place. <laughs> so just keep asking questions. Uh, feel, free, feel free to reach out to me if you have any personal questions, um, but definitely keep following along and uh, there'll be more topics about this. And if this has resonated with you and you're like, I want to learn more about this or another topic, then please let me know and I will definitely bring you some more information. But that is all I have. Thank you for, for joining in. Take care.